Monday night football here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium as we have the international friendlies for the Philippines against Chinese Taipei. My name is Jamer De La Cruz and I'm joined with uh, Jing Am Lang on the commentary. Uh, Jing, how are you today and how excited are you for this game? Uh, do, doing fantastic, Jamer. <laughs> Extremely excited for what's to come here today. Uh, Chinese Taipei coming fresh from a very good result against a powerhouse in the region in Thailand and the Philippines of course coming fresh from a victory uh, against Nepal just four days ago so very excited for this one both teams coming in in good form and we got a great crowd great energy here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium so we're expecting in a great match well we had more than 3,000 here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium last Thursday and we are expecting more people to come in as we head into the start of the game before all of that we go to the starting lineups first off for the Philippines after a short commentary stint here in the uh, panel uh, Neil Etheridge is starting on goal he'll be joined by Kiki Linares at the back as well as Carly De Murga, Dice Quesato and Dylan De Broeker um, also joined with uh, Jesse Curran our midfield is going to be composed by Sandro Reyes and uh, Mike Ott and our forwards will be uh, Harvey Gayoso Patrick Reichel and uh, Mike Ott, uh, or sorry, uh, OJ Porteria. How do you see this panning out for the Philippines? Well, I think Etheridge enjoyed himself uh, in commentary four days ago, but uh, he's going to enjoy himself much more in between the sticks. Five changes for coach Hans Michael Weiss. Uh, as you said, Linares comes in. Uh, Gayoso, De Broeker, Reichel enters, and of course, Etheridge as well. So, a bit of a switch up, and it's going to be very interesting to see how De Broeker copes in midfield. We haven't seen him uh, out for the national team for quite some time, uh, but he is a very capable person and a very technical footballer, perhaps not without the range of, of Ingresso, but he is very kept, uh, a very capable deputy in the middle of midfield. Harvey Gayoso gets his just rewards for scoring, and I think he provides a lot of energy for this side. It's going to be a very interesting um, dynamic for this side to see, is Gayoso going to start up top? Is he going to start on the right side like he did when he came on as a substitute? There's a few question marks that we will see answers to in the next few minutes. Well, it's going to be exciting. Uh, Neil Etheridge was actually itching to play uh, during that game against Nepal. But now we head into looking into the starting lineup for Chinese Taipei. Of course, they'll be bannered by their team captain, Wu Chin Ching, and also their goal scorer against Thailand, uh, Chen Ting Yang. Uh, their forwards will be Yao Xing Yu and Xia Huang Yu. And their goalkeeper will be Wen Chie Pan. Uh, with their draw against Thailand, do you think it's going to be a tougher match that they're going to have against the Philippines? Or will, it, will they make it more difficult for the Philippines this time around? Oh, they're going to make it difficult for the Philippines uh, squad, that's for sure. Uh, going 2-2 against Thailand is no joke. And that was a full strength Thailand that they were able to get that draw against. So... This is a side that is enjoying a new head coach bounce as well. Gary White, fresh um, from a previous stint with Taiwan. And now he gets an opportunity to showcase his talents again with this Chinese Taipei side that is really eager to test themselves again against uh, a Philippine side that has been how should you say struggling a little bit in the last few months and this will be a great test for both sides well you've mentioned Harvey Gayosa earlier scoring in that game against Nepal and he's going to be one of the players to watch for the Philippines the newly minted Philippines Football League champion uh, Harvey Gayoso is going to show us what he is capable with in terms of playing on the right wing or even on the center forward position how do you see him playing out this game? I know that you've already mentioned this earlier, but where do you see Harvey playing tonight? I like to think he's going to play up top to provide a bit more of a physical presence and speed going forward. Uh, when he came on on the right flank, there was really nobody to attack the crosses. And Harvey Gayoso, with his height, with his uh, physique, 
is a bit more of a target man than OJ Porteria, who will more likely play on the left side. But we never know what coach Hans Michael Weiss is going to choose. So it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how things pan out here in the next few moments. Well, a few minutes here, the Rizal Memorial Stadium, the grandstand is buzzing. The Ultras Filipinas down that bleacher side are ready to cheer on the Philippine Askels. And when we come back, it's going to be Philippines versus Chinese Taipei. Where are
So the players are ready. We are ready here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium, Jing. It's going to be an exciting match. Again, like what we've mentioned in the pre-match, Thailand or Chinese Taipei made it difficult for Thailand in their friendly match. Nepal made it hard as well for the Philippines. But what's at stake right now for the Philippines as they close out the June international window is for them to get their form and to understand how Coach Michael Weiss wants to set things up towards their November uh, window for the FIFA World Cup and the Asian Cup qualifiers. That's exactly it, right? They're preparing for November and Coach Hans Michael Weiss is getting two great games to really see which personnel he can trust, what shape he wants to uh, move forward with going down the road. And uh, these two matches provide a stiff test for him. Uh, with Nepal, he was able to dictate with the ball a little bit uh, be able to ask more questions of the defense of Nepal and understand what it was like to deal with a good counter-attacking side. Now, against Chinese Taipei, will we be able to dictate possession the same way? We know that against Thailand, Chinese Taipei only had 30% of the ball against Thailand, but still were able to get a 2-2 draw. Now, whether or not the possession statistics are going to be that skewed remains to be seen, but we know that they can be hard to breach and they are dangerous on the counter and particularly in set pieces so these are things that we will have to deal with in this match and it's going to be a, a fantastic test for this group of Ascals. Well, the momentum is just rising for the Ascals after their win against Nepal, breaking that four-game losing skid. We've had our campaigns in the Middle East. Sadly, wasn't that much uh, productive. But now, after their win against, the, uh, against Nepal, they were able to get their groove on. They were able to finally get their own rhythm. And they, they were passing the ball quite nicely. And we're hoping that they're going to gain more momentum this game so that they can close out the June international friendlies on a high note. So the players are ready. Chinese Taipei will kick things off. Playing from right to left. Their team captain is on the center field. Coach Hans Michael Weiss is ready. Coach Gary White of Chinese Taipei is ready as well. We're just waiting for the kickoff. Both sides high on confidence and that's what you want. Both teams at the top of their game seemingly heading into this one. Historically, we've had some uh, interesting matchups against Chinese Taipei. They might be further down in the FIFA standings, but this is going to be a very even game, and we expect it to be very competitive indeed. Well, Coach Michael Weiss mentioned on the post-match press conference or even in the pre-match conference that they're not after the rankings. They are after the win, and here we go. Chinese Taipei playing from right to left, sending the ball forward right away. Narvi Gayos is just going to head that out. Philippines are just going to test the waters in the first few minutes of this match. And from what it looks like, Chinese Taipei are going all offensive, looking to gain the early momentum in the first five minutes of the game. So Jesse Curran keeps his right back position. He started at right wing in the previous matchup against Nepal. That's going to be a silly foul given away by Linares. We talked about 
Gary Whiteside, as we take a look at him on the sideline here for Chinese Taipei, are, are dangerous on the set piece. You look at their players, there's a lot of height in that squad, and this is going to be an early test for our back line. Chinese Taipei will be having a free kick. This is what Coach Gary White mentioned as well in the pre-match. They're kind of strong in terms of set pieces. We have one right now through this free kick to be taken by Wu Yen Shu. Coach Hans Michael Weiss, of course, looking to start the rebuilding stages of the Philippine Ascals in his 12-month stay here. His second journey or his second tour here in the Philippines. His first one stint back in 2011 until 2014. Uh, very productive um, journey indeed we'll have the free kick now straight to the wall and oh! Neil Etheridge a deflection from the wall an early goal for Chinese Taipei dream start for the visitors took a nasty deflection on the way in it didn't look like it was supposed to be a dangerous delivery initially but that Deflection really made it difficult for Neil Etheridge, who was at full stretch. Uh, sadly, couldn't get to it. Let's see this one again. Wu Yen Shu took the free kick directly, had a deflection on Mike Ott, unfortunately. And the Neil Etheridge just misjudged the bounce from Mike Ott's head. You feel for Neil Etheridge there. Back in between the sticks after missing out on the first match. And that was the worst possible way for this game to start. Super unlucky with that deflection. Nine times out of ten, that was going to be a delivery too low. And not going to be of much service to the individuals who made the run into the box. But as it stands, it's 1-0. And it's going to be an uphill climb for the Azkals right from the get-go. We're talking about momentum builder for the Philippines after the win against Nepal. Now they are trailing with just two minutes, three minutes into this game. And Chinese Taipei will be looking to go for the counter. But they're going to calm things down. They have the time. Rain is pouring heavy here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. It will add to the drama that we do have in this game. You know, strangely, Jamer, this might be a positive for the Azkals because... Initially in that game against Nepal, the Philippines started really slow, had a lot of control, but didn't really threaten going forward. And that, that, that's what prompted the early substitutions for Coach Hans Michael Weiss. And that kind of changed things up. When we started becoming more positive, the Philippines was actually very dangerous with the ball. So with this particular scoreline, we don't have a choice. We're chasing the game now. We have to be positive with the ball. And this is where we are most effective, in my opinion. Just like that, Patrick Reichel on the counter. Great pass from the back. And they earned themselves the first corner of the match. Michael Weiss being forced to shuffle his cards a bit. Try to see how they're going to play out the starting 11. But they do have themselves a corner to be taken by Mikey Hot. Here's the delivery inside the box. Short one, cleared by Chinese Taipei only as far as OJ Porteria, but the pass to Mike Ott was just strong. The so Chinese Taipei will have to breathe and will have a throw in. Rain really pouring here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Uh, folks vacating the bleacher area, which is a bit of a shame, but the ball is going to be slick. Hopefully it doesn't rain too hard that the field doesn't get drenched, but here we go again. Uh, on the counter, cleared once more for another corner for the Philippines. It's the response that you want to see from the Philippines. The Azkas not wasting any time in trying to mount a response here against Chinese Taipei. And I think that's one weak point that they're trying to exploit now. The left wing of Chinese Taipei opening up. Here's the delivery from Mike Ott. Short one headed out. Curran. Cleared away by Chinese Taipei. Dylan De Broeker. Not the usual spot that you see Dylan play. He's playing defense today. I think he'll be setting up in the center of midfield. 
Uh, on set pieces, he's going to be the last man. But it seems Reichelt is preferred up top. The guy also is going to stay on that right flank. And it's an interesting position for him. It's the first time that he played there in the previous match, but him being very strong on his left foot, allowing him to cut in from that right side is going to be an interesting weapon for Coach Weiss. Despite the offside, what you were saying, Jing, with uh, Harvey Gay also playing on the right wing, that's how we exploited that goal against Nepal. It started from the right wing, spread it on to the middle, and then finally got the ball again inside the box. So that's one thing that we're going to be looking at for Harvey Gay also. And with uh, Rachel, although uh, we had a, an injury scare in that game uh, because of the collision of heads, he's back, he's well, and he's playing up top for the Philippines. Oh, it's fantastic to see Rachel be healthy. It was a shame that he was only able to play a few minutes in that match against Nepal. Has been a fantastic servant for the Ascos for many, many years. Extremely versatile, very experienced, and he's going to be a, a strong target man up front for the Philippines. Chinese Taipei, one possession again. Jesse Curran fighting for the ball. And despite the Philippines putting the pressure on Chinese Taipei, they're holding up pretty well over the last five minutes since they've scored a goal. They have an injury on the floor here for Chinese Taipei. Looks like he's really struggling here. It took a shot to the solar plexus, it seems like. Might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. But from the early indications, Chinese Taipei are going to pay a 4-3-3. And we're going to see just how adventurous they're going to be moving forward. And how they set up defensively so far. Ooh, looks like we had some uh, floodlight issues here. Uh, lost a few of the, the lights. Although the field still looks playable I think the referees are gonna check that as well one of the requirements to have uh, an international friendly match in a day like this especially playing on a night time you have to have your floodlights working properly uh, some of them went off while the physios are attending on Yu Yao Xing Harley DeMurga just asking our referee out here to check they're going to have to uh, stop the play for a bit. But from what it seems like, the players are going to stay on the pitch while the stadium facilities are working on the floodlights opportunity for the players to sort themselves out on the pitch there's been discussions being had between Curran, Reyes as well as Patrick Reichelt as to how they want to attack this Chinese Taipei side we're having a great look at the team captain Neil Etheridge discussing things with our first referee Le Wu Lin and our fourth official Meliton Pelayo on how things are going to go with the situation that we have right now in terms of the floodlights here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium the game looks playable match commissioner Coco Torre consulted there about whether or not to continue and the sooner this game gets going the better as they can still take advantage of the field not being flooded with such heavy rain pouring down on it and hopefully we can get deep into this half before the water really becomes an issue. This might play to the advantage of the Ascos having a couple of minutes of break because of the issue with the floodlights. They're killing the momentum off of Chinese Taipei who had a goal in the second minute of the match. They're going to continue the play as expected. Fields are getting flooded a bit now because of the heavy rain that we have. From what it seems, we're going to restart the play as it is. Neil Etheridge sends a ball up front. 
looking for Porteria, but the ball has been taken away by Chinese Taipei. Linares heading the ball out. And now Harvey also wins possession for the Philippines. Sandro Reyes goes down and a foul is called against Chinese Taipei. As we take a look on the replay, Jing. Big opportunity here for Sandro Reyes to really prove himself against tough opposition. He's worked himself into a position where he could become a mainstay now at such a young age for this Asco side. And Mike Ott's got a great chance here. Chance for the Philippines. Mike Ott goes down and the Philippines have a penalty. Foul against Chen Ting Yang. Chinese Taipei pleading their case. But referee Le Wu Lin calls for a penalty. Let's have one more look at it here. Mike Ott shielding the ball. Took a bit of contact from behind. Nothing too strong from the center back. But the question is, do you call that if it isn't inside the penalty box? And I think that gets called 9 out of 10 times. And the referee thought that's enough for a penalty. And it's going to be Mike Ott to step up himself. He won the penalty. He's going to take the penalty. That's through Wei Wang actually was called for a foul. Player uh, number three, Chen Ting Yang, just pleading the case for Chinese Taipei. And here we go for Mike Ott. Go for the Philippines! Equalizer for player number seven, Mike Ott. Cool call collected for Mike Ott. Earned the penalty, tucked it away himself. Crowd electric here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. I can't hear everybody here because of the heavy rain, but the louder voice that I can hear right now are the Philippine fans after that equalizer. Let's take a look at that once more, Jing. It's so quick, the replay is catching up. No hesitation from Mike Ott. Held his nerve here, right down the middle. Cool as you like. Cool as a cucumber. And it's 1-1 now here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And momentum on the side of the Philippines as Patrick Reichel tried to get that over to Harvey Gayosa, but the ball goes out of play. And that will be a throw in for Chinese Taipei. It might have come from the penalty spot, but you have to say the Philippines deserve that response. After conceding, they've been very aggressive moving forward. And now the Philippines taking offense here at that high boot on Kike Linares. Chen Chao and a bit aggressive on that foul as we take a look into it once more. That was a high boot. Both of them were high, but the studs were up from Chen. You can see why the whistle was blown against him. So free kick now for the Philippines long one looking for right shot. Headed away. Now it's finally cleared out by Chinese Taipei. Yu Chao Huang with possession. Deflected. That's going to go out for a throw in. Great move by our organizers out here. Transition was quick from Chinese Taipei initially. Nice little exchanges, but the, the defensive transition of the Philippines was impressive. Good movement from Chinese Taipei, but easily covered by the Philippines. Mike Ott with the deflection. Chinese Taipei on the counterattack once more, but that's going to be thwarted by the Broika. And the long ball forward looking for Mike Ott. Not a great first touch. This ball is going to be battled out by two players. And the Philippines will win. Another throw in. I mentioned earlier, Jing, our organizers have moved our fans from the bleachers now here at the grandstand, giving them the shade that they need. Nah, it's, too, it's too difficult to be out there in this kind of weather. It's lovely to be able to... Able to the noise level is going to pick up, that's for sure. Here's the current on the ball. Calm and composed takes that back to Neil Etheridge. 15 minutes have gone by. It's 1-1.
this international friendly between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. For those of you who has just joined us, Chinese Taipei won a free kick in the second minute and scored thanks to a deflection from Mike Ott. But Mike Ott scored the equalizer through the penalty. We talked about this being a competitive match, Jamer. And it's certainly delivering early on in this contest. Philippines enjoying much of the possession in this first 15 minutes of the game. Reyes. Already the interchanges are a little bit cleaner, a little bit crisper. And with more time together, training together under coach Vice, you can see that the players are growing a familiarity with one another and the system that the coach wants to play. And this is what we want for the Philippines. Having the rebuilding stage under coach Vice, we want them to play a little bit more aggressive, have those crisper passes. And over the last few games, they've been doing that pretty well. And uh, we really hope that it's going to be a start of something bigger for the Philippines. Philippines playing from the back. Jesse Curran gives it to Reyes. Great movement from Sandro. Harvey Gayoso headed away for a throw in. Left the ball for Chinese Taipei to use. Carly DeMurga heads it out. And the battle continues in terms of the aerial battle out here. Chinese Taipei on the counterattack. That's going to be covered well. And the Morgue has been taken down. Foul against Chinese Taipei. That's going to be a good battle. You can see he's a physical player, Yu Yao Xing. Carly De Morgan just using his experience, putting his body in between the player and the ball. Felt the contact from behind. And Possession wise right now, Jing, 80% for the Philippines. Just like their game against Thailand, Chinese Taipei struggling to get into the possession of the ball. And the Philippines struggled to hold on to the ball and really be positive with it in that match against Nepal. That hasn't been the problem here today. And the connections have been good. De Broeker doing well to start, start off this match. And there's been a nice little connection on this right side between Curran. Reyes and Harvey Goyoso. The Broker playing that role as the connection between the defense and the midfield of the Philippines right now. One of the players that we are looking at in terms of helping the back line provide the chances up front as we have Harvey Goyoso taking a strike from distance. Saved decently by Wen Chiepan. But the pressure stays on for a throw in. And this is what makes Harvey Gayoso so dangerous. He's got pace, he's got the ability to score close to the goal, but he's also got the range and the power with that left foot of his. So uh, he's a difficult man to mark. Gonna get that ball across, but the Philippines will stay on possession. We'll sing in on 20 minutes of the game. Possession-wise, it might not be that even. But the midfield battles, the aerial battles between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei are making things different. And as it stands, it's still 1-1. Jesse Curran down the right side, giving the ball up front for Harvey Gayoso, but just couldn't control the ball. Great intention there from our back line. The Philippines finding some space in the center of the pitch in that final third and getting some good runs in there and Patrick Reichelt particularly clever with his run wide dragging some defenders out of position and making space available for Mike Ott for Harvey Goyoso to run in there and right now that's causing Chinese Taipei quite a few problems defensively 
this is one of the things that we have observed as well with the Philippines. Yes, they're starting the, bl the play from the back, but if you look into the midfield, they're getting compact as well, allowing our front runners to have the options. Carly de Murga looking to start the play from the back. Forward pass to Reichelt, headed out by Chinese Taipei once more. Throw in for the Philippines. Rachel, the pass to Gayoso. Gayoso cuts back in. Leaves it for Reyes. Past one. Gets past two. Inside the box. Crosses it. Reflected away by Chinese Taipei. Lovely stuff from the Philippines. Great work on the right side. Fantastic footwork from Sandra Reyes to create the chance. Beautiful football all around. Sandra Reyes worked like the magnet out there, attracting almost everybody in defense before offloading it to the middle. Just couldn't get that final ball in. They'll have plenty more chances out here, Jing. It's got to be a particular joy for the, the young ones watching this right now. Two homegrown players really expressing themselves out there on the pitch today in Harvey Goyoso and Sandra Reyes. There's a long ball forward looking for OJ Porteria. It's going to be guided towards the corner flag by player number 25. That's Wang Jun Myung. Clears it towards the path of our back line out here. Philippines have amped up the pressure a bit towards this passing OJ Porteria blocked by the defense of Chinese Taipei and here they go on a counter attack Yu Yaoxing asking for a foul but the referee says the play goes on Kali Demurga hasn't lasted this long at a high level of football without those veteran smarts and you saw it there doing enough just to delay and slow down his marker without causing an infraction with one two between mike ott and uh, sandro uh, the ball is out great defensive by chinese taipei they win themselves a goal kick we're halfway through this first half the play has been dynamic it's been positive it's been entertaining from the philippines and chinese taipei we expected them to be a sturdy and resolute side and right now they're showing that they are a difficult nut to crack but they are definitely on the back foot right now jamer and they are finding life difficult here at the rizal memorial stadium chinese taipei being forced to be on the defensive the foul is called against the Philippines. Chinese Taipei now starting to play from midfield with Wu Yenshu. Wang gets it over to the middle for team captain Wu Chunqing. Chinese Taipei enjoying this spell of possession. So it's the right side for Wang Zhong Myung. Yu Chao Huang battling it out on the right wing. Chance Michael Weiss. He's very animated on the touchline, uh, asking his staff as well, uh, joined by Coach Ernie Nieras and Stefan Schrock, who unretired himself against uh, Nepal, but uh, made his way back in the coaching staff. Completely lost his voice in that first game, Coach Hans Michael Weiss. Such was his enthusiasm on the sideline. That's ah, a great crowd that we have here, and it is coincided with the PFF Congress. So, members from associations are all over the Philippines are here to enjoy this match, and they're getting a treat right now. Just uh, seeing the future of Philippine football, if they do their works right. 
this is where they're going to see their players end up in. The national team representing the Philippines. Possession from the back. Like, oh, the goal scorer from the spot. Gives it to Carly de Murga. So the rain has stopped here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. The action is still ongoing while they are being serenaded by the Ultras Filipinas. The Philippines still trying to figure out the connections on the left side. Haven't quite yet penetrated via that channel yet. Goalkeeper sends it forward for Chinese Taipei. OJ Porteria tried to get his head to it. Another battle in the air. OJ Porteria wins. But it was taken away by Estevez. Long ball forward now for Chinese Taipei. And Jesse Curran clears it out. Great defense out here from Curran. And great control as well from Harvey Gayoso. Sandro Reyes. He's not going to be taken away from that ball that easy. A great through ball from Sandro. Reichel just couldn't control the pass. What an incisive pass there from Sandro. Yeah, you love to see it, Jamer. It's not just the, it was good defending from Curran initially, but being able to translate it into an attack and a clean one at that. Over to uh, Harvey Goyoso, over to Sandro Reyes, and then through the channel into Patrick Reichel. It didn't come off in the end, but... That was, again, clean transition from the Philippines. And this is such an improvement from what we saw four days ago. Great movement off the ball and on the ball for the Philippines now. As they try to go for that go-ahead goal advantage just called by our referee. OJ Porteria with a pass. That's been cleared out. Geos has been called for offside as well. Great look at the Ultras Filipinas right now, singing their hearts out for the Philippines. They miss this. They miss this feeling of being in the Rizal Memorial Stadium. The last time they were here supporting the Filipinas in their AFF Women's Championship run. And now they have missed as well the opportunity to chant for the Ascals. You love to see it. Monday night at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Fantastic crowd that we have here. The Philippines enjoying... You know, whether it's the Ascos, whether it's the Filipinas, just getting a great treat of a, a footballing spectacle. And what's not to love? Despite the weather conditions and Monday night traffic as well, the fans have made their way into the Rizal Memorial Stadium to support the Philippines. And you see the impact that it's had on the players as well. Uh, the energy levels that they're bringing, the passion that they're showing on the pitch. Uh, you see Sandra Reyes there closing out. Uh, really, you know, it's been an up-tempo game. And you, it's difficult to get up the same way with an empty stadium uh, in, in sort of the venues that we were exposed to during uh, the pandemic. It's just fantastic to be able to get these games back uh, on a regular basis. Like what Coach Michael Weiss said, they love this. They love seeing the crowd cheer them on. That gives them that extra boost from our 12th man. Okay, so it died down a bit with both Philippines and Chinese Taipei looking for options. So far, Philippines exploiting more of the... Uh, uh, the mishaps of the back line of Chinese Taipei. One of the questions that we had to start this match, Jamer, was would Chinese Taipei be able to express themselves on the ball? 30% possession against Thailand. That's something that you kind of expect against a powerhouse like Thailand. But against the Philippines, that was more of uh, up in the air. We weren't sure if the Philippines would be able to dictate possession and really dictate the play. And right now, it's proving that the Philippines is just superior on the ball as of the moment. And Chinese Taipei on the back foot, 
and finding themselves are finding it very difficult here to be able to create openings of their own. Well, one thing is to control possession. Other thing is to make it work for your side. And the Philippines are exploiting those chances themselves, not asking for any mishaps from the back line of Chinese Taipei, but they're just making it work for them through the possession that they're gaining as of the moment. When you look back at it, it was the perfect start for them. We talked about set pieces. They got an early set piece. They were able to convert from it. But the Philippines have avoided committing any unnecessary fouls. And they've cleaned up their play quite a lot. And they continue to threaten moving forward. And again, look at Sandro Reyes there. He pops up deep sometimes to collect near the center circle. There he's making the run into that right channel. It's making life difficult for these defenders. Who are they going to mark? Who are they going to follow? Uh, the, the, the Ascals are interchanging positions rather fluidly. And it's making it a lot more difficult to figure out how to contain them. You cannot pinpoint a single target man for the Philippines right now because all of them playing up top can be a threat on goal. You have Harvey Gayoso, you have Patrick Reichelt. You have uh, OJ Porteria. You also have sometimes Sandro Reyes joining the attack. I mean, the Philippines are enjoying the options that they have right now, but at the same time, they're just having some difficulties in finding the right option for them. You mentioned Porteria there. He hasn't been on the ball a lot, but he has played a significant role tonight so far, forcing Chinese Taipei to respect the width that he provides. He's been hugging that left side quite nicely. And it, it, it forces the right back from being able to get involved in staying compact in that back line of theirs. And right now, everything is going the way of the Philippines. And particularly, particularly on this right side, they are very, very effective. Philippines right now on the counter-attack. Harvey also... Heads it back to Sandro Reyes. Great pass there for Daisuke Sato. Sato from distance. He's trying to make the goalkeeper work. It's off target for Sato. Plays as a left back, Daisuke Sato, but he is an attack-minded left back. Has scored from distance in the past. Very dangerous overlapping. He's a real threat for the Philippines, as well as being a fantastic defender, a real asset for the Ascals. Fans enjoying their treat, their snacks here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And they're also enjoying the action that we have. 12 minutes remaining in the first half. It's Philippines 1, Chinese Taipei 1. We're glad that you could join us in this international friendly between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. Brought to you live on One Sports and One Sports Plus under the special production of the Philippine Football Federation. And my name is Jamie De La Cruz, joined by Jing Am Lang. Shen Ting Yang. It's a two, Yu Yao Xing, but the ball is out for a throw in for the Philippines. High boot has been called. Unintentional, of course, but he's going to get a yellow card there, Harvey. First booking of the day. He made contact, and it was solid as well from Harvey Gayoso. Didn't see the man coming in with his head from behind. As you said, Jamer, no malice in that one, but certainly dangerous play from the Ascal's right winger. So with that yellow card, Harvey Giosa is going to be playing with a caution right now for the rest of the game. Chinese Taipei. The Philippines, they regain possession. Kiki Linares. And starting to play from the back. There he is again. Sandro Reyes seems like wherever the ball is Sandro Reyes is there 
Nobody, nobody up front for Chinese Taipei to capitalize on the counter. Pass for Porteria has been telegraphed by Chinese Taipei. But Jesse Curran will stay in possession for the Philippines. Great one-two between Reyes and Curran, former teammates in Kaya FC Luilo. Both players now applying their trades overseas, especially with Sandro Reyes playing in Germany with the reserve team of Brother Fourth. Which coincidentally, Stefan Schrock's former club in Germany as well. Oh, it's great to see Sandro Reyes testing himself in Europe. Not easy to break into that side, but you can see that the confidence level has really grown for the young man. It's not easy to be a young player stepping into a side of experienced players like this uh, in the Ascals, but not only has he shown that he is ready for this level, but he has been one of the better players on the pitch tonight. Just couldn't get to the ball there, Jessica, and with Sandro Reyes making something out of nothing in that play. But Curran just couldn't get a touch to the ball. And Chinese Taipei will have a goal kick. You mentioned Sandro Reyes stepping up to the plate, playing with the senior national side. I think in this squad that we have right now, Sandro Reyes is the only player in the starting lineup for the Philippines who can play on three different age group teams for the Philippines. You can play with the senior squad with the under-23s and I think you can also still play for the under-19s. And what, what makes him particularly special is his ability to unlock defenses and to do something that is unexpected. Because of his talent, his close control, he's extremely dynamic on the pitch. And that gives the Philippines that added bite in attack. But it, what we're seeing as well is the maturation of his game defensively, his work ethic, his positioning uh, and his willingness to get stuck in uh, perhaps aspects of his game that uh, weren't quite developed yet in uh, recent years Sandro Reyes will be looking into uh, exploiting the defense once more as he gets the ball from OJ Porteria Sandro Reyes asking for options, Mike Ott cleared away only as far as Daes Quesato and Reichelt now on the counter attack and here's a strike and Kiki Reichelt gives the go ahead goal for the Philippines. Patrick Reichelt, <laughs> unbelievable. People might talk about his age, but there is no question he can deliver on this stage for this side a beautiful goal from Patrick Reichelt that really encompasses what he's all about and this one started from a defensive pickoff translated immediately into attack look at this swarming defense Sato picks it off and Reichelt look at that one touch two touch lifts it over the keeper Beautiful awareness from the striker, Patrick Reichelt, doing it again for the Ascals. 2-1 for the Philippines. Beautiful from Kiki. From one of the old guards to the other, but with the celebration from Kiki Reichelt. Who says I'm old? I can still score for the Philippines and I can put Philippines on top here in this game against Chinese Taipei. It's 2-1 with five minutes remaining in the first half, Jing. Fantastic. The Azkas have been on fire in this first half. And now they have a scoreline to reflect that. Have to be wary of the counterattack here from Chinese Saipei. It's Estevez finding the options over the left side for Fong. Easily covered by Jesse Curran once more. 
Self-inflicted from the Philippines here. Two players getting tangled up. But it's the recovery that was most important there. I found myself talking a lot about the previous match four days ago. But it really is amazing to see how far this team has come in terms of their togetherness, in terms of their aggressiveness in that short span of time. At a closer look on the deflection from Harvey Gayoso, just clearing the ball out. A Chinese Taipei asking themselves, what are we going to do in order to level this match before we head into the locker rooms? Too strong of a pass there. Philippines will have a throw in. Look at Neil Etheridge there. Hasn't been involved too much in this game. But his presence is definitely being felt out there on the pitch. There's a reason why he's wearing the captain's armband. That's what you would expect from your team captain. Even in his game, when he actually commentated, he actually went off and went onto the pitch to bark instructions for the coaching staff. One of the real ones, Neil Etheridge. Wants to make sure that everybody's on their toes. Just a few more minutes remaining in this first half. No lapses in concentration. And that's what he's hoping for here. He can't afford to let Chinese Taipei back into this game before the break. So far, the Philippines have been on target. Three shots on target for the Philippines. Only one for Chinese Taipei. The only one. It seemed the, the goal that they have scored in the second minute. But since then, the Philippines have been on the offensive and making the most out of the chances that they get. We just talked about Neil Lethridge. He's been a spectator since the opening minute of the game. After conceding, he hasn't had anything to do. And that's been the kind of game it's been. All right, Chelt. He thought he broke the offside flag there. He stopped in Chinese Taipei wins possession again. Philippines on the counter attack once more. Telegraphed by Chinese Taipei. Foul is against the Philippines. As player is down. Uh, it was just too late on the ball there, OJ Porteria, on the tackle on Wang Rue. Final minute in the first half, before some added time, of course. The crowd coming alive now here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Chanting Askos. Just so aggressive. So far, the Ascals have shown in this first half that they're not allowing any space for Chinese Taipei to express themselves on the ball. They've gotten the ball wide, but no chance to deliver a cross. The Philippines wouldn't mind any physical battle as well as they're ready to battle it all out against Chinese Taipei. We'll have three minutes of additional time in the first half. Plenty more time for Chinese Taipei to make one out here or for the Philippines to get an insurance goal heading into the locker rooms. Dylan De Broeker has had a great first half. He slotted into that center of midfield 
and he's looked a real veteran out there alongside the rest of his teammates. It's been a real smooth transition for him after being uninvolved in the first match against Nepal. Great defense again from the Philippines as they clear the ball out. Chinese Taipei thought they'll have one more chance on goal there. But the ball goes out for a throw in. And not a good sign there. Harvey Gayoso has provided so much energy on this right flank and a lot of dynamism, but he's just signaled to the bench there, pointing at his hamstring a little bit. He might have felt something on the stretch. We've already lost two players to injury. Kevin Ingresso unavailable for this match. Kishiro Daniels similarly unavailable for this match. Certainly don't want to add to the injured list. We can't afford another forward going, going on the injured list for the Philippines as we're looking for more options up front. If you look into the bench of the Philippines, we only have Andres Aldiguer as one of the possible options up front for the Philippines. A standout from the UAAP, Gio Pabuwalan, could also be one of the key players you could put up front. Of course, Minigishi is a, a potent weapon on the flanks where Harvey Gayoso has been positioned. So that's definitely an option. There's, there's a few out there for, for Coach Hans Michael Weiss. I'm sure he's not panicking at this point in time. And plus, he's getting close to the break. So there'll be an opportunity to really assess how bad things are for Harvey Gayoso. So far, closing in on the first half, Coach Hans Michael Weiss just gesturing on the bench. They're being entertained right now. Of course, they're happy they have the lead. Scramble for the ball. Deflection. Throw in once more for Chinese Taipei. What could be one final opportunity? Not anymore as our first referee signals the halftime. It's Philippines 2, Chinese Saipei 1. What are your thoughts on the first half out here, Jing? Fantastic performance from the Philippines so far. After the worst possible start to the game, they've recovered in some spectacular style. Fluid football, a real dynamic display, and so much energy being showcased by the side and some real fight being showcased by the Ascals. This is a type of performance that really captured the imagination of a nation and they've showcased it here in this first half. And if the second is anything like this first half, we're in for a real treat, Jamer. Plenty more to come in the second half of this game between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. Highlights and stats when we come back. Again, it's the Philippines versus Chinese Taipei in this FIFA International friendly match.
halftime here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. The Philippines getting a goal to get themselves ahead of Chinese Taipei. Two goals to one. We now have uh, the pleasure of seeing the highlights of the first half out here, Jing. Oh, let's, let's take a look at some of the highlights. Started not really well for the Philippines through this uh, free kick from Chinese Taipei that led to the goal. Talk about an eventful start, Javer. Early foul and this taking place right from the get-go. That was even before the first minute had elapsed completely. The perfect start for the visitors and a wicked deflection from Mike Ott. But the Philippines responded in about the perfect possible way. They really showcased that, that fire, that fight that has made the Azkals really a household name in Philippine sports. And uh, th this was the reward with Mike Ott earning a penalty and tucking it away in style early on. Turning himself from zero to hero out there. He's the one who deflected the free kick earlier on, the first two minutes of the match. But when he got the foul, he got the penalty. He duly delivered with a cool and composed shot from the penalty spot to level the match at 1-1. That was just rewards for the response that the Azkals had. And the beautiful thing about this first half was that they weren't happy with just getting the equalizer they really built upon that and Harvey Goyosa was one of the main threats this right side of the Philippines was extremely effective in causing Chinese Taipei all kinds of trouble and this look at the, the work rate the tr defensive transition and Patrick Reichel doing what he does for the Philippines finding the back of the net putting the pressure on is Curran and then this one touch passing from Sato to the other OG Patrick Reichel celebrating for the Philippines just like what he said in that celebration I'm not too old for this game as we take a look on the stats as well Philippines leading the possession at 63 to 37 shots for the Philippines four shots on goal three of them on target meanwhile in terms of uh, Chinese Taipei not making much of the chances not exploiting much of the defense of the Philippines out here Jing we asked the question whether they would be able to express themselves against the Philippines the possession statistics show that they are struggling to cause the Philippines problems on top of that one shot one goal that was it for Chinese Taipei so after a beautiful start they've offered very little indeed going forward that has been a testament to the dominance that the Azkos have showed in this one but we saw right there substitution at halftime Gio Pabuanan coming in for Harvey Goyoso that's gonna be a big one because Harvey Goyoso was a constant threat on the right side connecting the defense and attack Curran, Gayoso, Reyes uh, into Reichel that was uh, a real fluid sort of connection that they had there so how does Pabuwalan fit into this we're gonna find out in the second half it is a big question mark right now for Gio Pabuwalan a champion in the UAAP replacing another champion in the UAP and newly minted champion in the Philippines Football League Gio Pabuwalan is touted to be one of the players who's coming out of the UAAP and uh, looking for a spot in one of the teams in the Philippines Football League and he has this next 45 minutes to prove himself that he belongs in the big leagues as we start the second half for the Philippines playing from right to left Gio what Pabuwalan. a fantastic opportunity for Gio Pabuwalan and and real faith being shown by the the coaching staff to put him in right at halftime uh, they had other options out there on the bench to play in a wide area but no they're giving him this chance right now in front of a, a fantastic crowd here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium to showcase his talent so great great chance here for Gio Pabuwalan right on cue Jing Gio Pabuala and sending the ball forward to Mike Ott was just covered by the defense the Philippines still has possession with OJ Porteria getting it through to Daisuke Sato taken down the referee says get up there's no foul and a chance for Chinese Taipei to go on the counter Kiki Linares is forcing 
Chinese Taipei. If you can see, they throw in. When you look at the reaction there of Yu Yao Xing, that's been the story of the game so far for the front men of Chinese Taipei. They're being out muscled and sort of lacking ideas with how to solve getting forward and getting in behind that back line. Story so far, Philippines will go on the counter, use the possession. Meanwhile, Chinese Taipei being forced to defend. They have possession right here, long ball forward. Linares with the, the foul there, says the referee. Linares visibly upset at that one. Thought he hadn't done anything untoward to give up the free kick. But this is a, a real positive for the away side. This is what they want more of. Chances to threaten this back line. Chances to threaten via set piece. Here's a set piece once more for Chinese Taipei. Covered so far by the Philippines. But they have another chance. But a save this time by Neil Etheridge. The header from Wu Chunqing is covered by our legendary number one between the sticks. This is what it's about for Chinese Taipei. Capitalizing on set pieces and the, the plays that lead up after it. Uh, that's where they are dangerous when they've got numbers inside the box and they're able to get that ball into the danger zone. That's another dangerous attempt from Chinese Taipei. Surprisingly, just the second of the game for them. But they're looking to be more on the offensive side now as they send the ball forward. Regain possession once more for Chinese Taipei. The Rizal Memorial Stadium. We're going to hear the classic Filipinas chant. We've heard that so many times in the AFF Women's Championship. Now we're hearing it in the international friendlies between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. You have to appreciate that the crowd here understands that the Ascos are going through a bit of an anxious moment to start off the second half and perhaps just need a little bit of a lift to get themselves settled on the ball and to get back into the flow of things that allowed them to dominate in that opening half. It's a great awareness being showcased here by the crowd. And right on cue, the Ultras Filipinas just giving everything that they can to support the Philippines. Chinese Taipei regains possession, keeps the ball in play. Wang John Myung. Porteria with the deflection, but that's a handball, says the referee. But this is about the most Chinese Taipei have enjoyed of the ball. And that says a lot of how this game has played out. But the more that they are able to spend with the ball at their feet, the more that their confidence will grow. We've seen what they can actually do on the counter as the Philippines had a couple of scares to begin the second half. So far, the Philippines are holding on their own quite well. Throw in once more for Chinese Taipei. They take it quick. Cleared out by the Philippines. Confirmation of the substitutions earlier with uh, Gio Pabo Island coming in for Harvey Gayoso. And the Philippines, with the departure of Gayoso, lose out not only on him being an outlet in transition and moving forward, but his energy in defense. Him and OJ Porterio on the opposite flank have been tremendous defensively, particularly in transition in transition in making counter-attacks almost impossible for Chinese Taipei. That's what Coach Renieras mentioned 
when he was talking about Harvey Gayoso, he built a kid like this, uh, knowing how to play from the back and go for the attack. As on cue, the Philippines are on the counter attack. Gio Pabuana just couldn't get to the ball, but the Philippines trying to get on possession once more as Chinese Taipei have a counter attack chance being started off by Yu Cha Chuang. Ball is out. Chinese Taipei earns a corner. I just mentioned Porteria, the work rate that he showcased here, tracking back, denying the cross. He's given up a corner kick here, but his his coach is going to be extremely happy with the diligence that he showcased on this left side. He's been known over the years as more of a flair player and a person who's able to create chances 1v1, but now he's a lot more of a well-rounded left winger. Here's the delivery now for Chinese Taipei headed inside the box. Kiki couldn't clear it. And Neil Etheridge saves the day. That's where Chinese Taipei were known to be stronger in terms of set pieces. As mentioned by Gary White. But this time around, Neil Etheridge saves it for the Philippines. And quick counter now for the Philippines. Forcing... Pan Wen Che to pluck the ball out of the thin air. There hasn't been a single set piece, Jamer, where Chinese Taipei haven't caused some sort of trouble, right? Uh, whether it's a corner kick, whether it's a free kick, uh, it's something that they really thrive at. And the Philippines will do well to try to minimize the amount of opportunities Chinese Taipei have uh, with set pieces. Sandro Reyes, great one too on the left side. Sandro Reyes looking for the option inside the box. Gets past two players, but Gio Pabualan will go for the chase here. Leaves it out for the throw in. But nevertheless, a chance once more for the Philippines with a cross. Pan Chehue clears it out. They have a chance again. Oh, Tries to stay on his feet. Cleared out once more for another throw in. Surprising choice there from the goalkeeper to punch that out under very little threat from the Ascos players. It looked like that was a clear catch. And as a result, another wave of attack on its way here for the Ascos. Oh, turning down the right side. And they clear the ball out right away. Linares with the interception. Porteria to start the counter. A deflection out for a throw in. End to end stuff right now here at the Rizal Memorial Jing. Sandro Reyes central to unlocking this Chinese Taipei side. Found himself on the left side. We got all the way to the end line. And Mike Ott was hoping for the ball to be squared to him, but nevertheless, promising sign from the Azkals as they're finding their groove once more going forward. A throw in taken by Sato. Reichelt with the great first touch. Not a better second. Chinese Taipei now with a throw in. Fans are starting to egg each other on here at the stands. Sato with a clearance. Rachel with a header. Cleared out. Now Porteria with a chance to go for the counter. Couldn't get it through the legs of Wang John Myung. Nasco's doing well to box Chinese Taipei inside their own half. Now here's Ott. Not afraid to commit numbers going forward here, the Azkos. Chinese Taipei unable to sort out their lines here. A bit of confusion as to who was going to take charge. And it was they've just uh, resulted in a, a booting clear rather aimlessly. Uh, almost a great pass towards OJ Porteria, but the number 10 just missed it. Now a chance for counter. A great movement from Linares to block that pass. He's been real solid today. 
real physical in the air, but as you saw there, able to cover ground very quickly to nip that attack in the bud. Chinese Taipei using the left side to uh, counter the Philippines with a clearance from Sandro Reyes. And they regain possession once more, Philippines. Ott. Good possession right now for the Askas. Pabualan. And the throw in for the Philippines. He's had a couple touches now, Gio Pabualan. He's going to settle into this match. Going to find his moments to contribute now. Yeah, I think that Sandra asking there. for a foul, but now Chinese Taipei going for the counter attack again. Wang Jun Myung on the right side sends the ball forward inside the box and an equalizer for Chinese Taipei. Yu Yao Xing levels the match and they finally did it in an open play. Jing, a fantastic counter attack from Chinese Taipei. You always run the risk when you engage high to leave spaces in behind and Chinese Taipei were able to utilize the space provided to them quick pass out to the wide area a good run from the left side you don't even see him in your frame yet and there he is running late at the back post you have to commit to that run and he certainly did and he blindsided Jesse Curran at the right back position and take a look at it here or was that Carly de Murga who was there trying to cover the back post. Yo, he yeah. arrived so late, Jamer. And that's the reason why it was difficult to mark. Yu Yao Singh's run there was just enough to break the offside from Carly de Morga. And the pass from Wang Jun Myung was just enough for him to find that open man inside the box. We got ourselves a ball game. This game is turning out as another classic encounter between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei. Like what we've mentioned before the broadcast, it's been a few times that the Philippines have faced Chinese Taipei. They've been invited a couple of times out here in the Philippines as well. If I'm not mistaken, they're one of the nations that were invited during the Philippine Peace Cup. And um, it's, it's just a thrilling match that we have right now heading into the hour mark of the game it's 2-2 just giving credit where it's due Chinese Taipei really making it difficult for this rebuilded side of the Philippines now we have to remember that this is a friendly and we use friendlies in preparation for tournaments right so this is a fantastic scenario for the Philippines because you want to see a side tested you want to be able to take on different aspects of the game now we've had an opportunity to dominate the game as we did in the first half but now we're getting a different question asked of us now uh, right with chinese taipei now building momentum and can we figure out a way to re-establish our control of the game uh, it's about our mentality more than anything right now and we're getting a chance to test these players and to see where their limits are so uh, this is a fantastic outing and exactly what you want to see in a friendly match and this is what coach Michael Weiss also pointed out that they don't care how much of a difference they have in the FIFA rankings it's all about how they're gonna play inside that pitch now it's looking like these sides are just level in terms of the of the standings but if you look into it there's a big gap between the two and as it stands it's 2-2 between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei Listen, you don't get a 2-2 result against Thailand without showing resolve, without having character as a side. And they scored very late against Thailand in that match. And you see here, these players have no quit in them. Now, there's going to be a yellow card shown here to Wang Rue. So the one who assisted the goal earlier Wang Jun Myung gets a yellow card from the referee. 
I think it's about complaining on the uh, the assistant referee on the touchline earlier. But you have to say fair play to Chinese Taipei. They were smashed in that first half, pretty much. Starved of possession, starved of opportunities, and they've come out here in the second half and have shown to be a, a, a resurgent side. Neil's pass from the back, almost making it to one of the players in wide up front. Chinese Taipei clears. And the battle in midfield goes on. Wang Jun Myung sends it forward once more for Yu Yao Sing. A strike blocked by De Murga. And now OJ Porteria wins possession for the Philippines. Mike Ott, acres of space on the left side of the field. Cuts back into the middle. Finds Sandro Reyes. Pabuala, great sliding tackle from number two of Chinese Taipei. But Philippines still has possession with Jesse Curran inside the box cleared out by Chen Ting Yang actions not over as Chinese Taipei have a counter attack chance with Wu Yen Shu offloading it to the running Wang Jun Myung on the right side sends another ball inside the box another dangerous ball and it's strike saved this time around by Neil Etheridge End-to-end -end action, Coach Weiss incensed, thought that was kept in play by Reichelt. But beautiful counter-attack again with Jesse Curran making it all the way to the end line. He was always going to be out of position. And Sandra Reyes now giving way for Hikaru Minigishi. From one dynamic midfielder to a versatile player in Hikaru Minigeshi who can play in the wings, play in the midfield. This is one of the uh, cards that coach Hans Michael Weiss is using right now to exploit those chances for the Philippines. And he's really being able to showcase the depth of this squad. Minigeshi not involved in that first match. Gio Pabawala not involved in that first match. The Breuker who started here, not involved in that first half, but they're getting lots of minutes here today. And they're being thrown into the fire, so to speak, in a match with real tempo, real energy, and with a real high level of play. When Coach Chance Michael Weiss mentioned about using the perfect timing for the players to be introduced in a friendly match, I thought he was just saying to ease them into the game but no they're throwing them at the most crucial moments of the game at the most crucial matches that we have in the international friendly as the philippines have another chance hikaru minigeshi on the counter with a strike saved by the goalkeeper pan wen Chie. and right off the mark the substitute trying to make a difference here how about that for a first contribution for hikaru beautiful first touch takes it away from his man makes his way almost casually into the box and the final strike not the most difficult for the goalkeeper but it's a sign of what Hikaru is all about in his prime playing years in the Philippines Football League we've seen those kind of balls from Hikaru Minigeshi those chances those cutbacks from the left wing towards the middle of the box and then just curling it past the goalkeeper I think that's one of the contributions Coach Hans Michael Weiss are looking for from Hikaru Minigeshi in this game. I mean, you take out somebody like Sandro Reyes, you know, with his ability on the ball, his close control, his dribbling skills, and you put in Hikaru Minigeshi, and you have something very similar. So it's a, a real asset to have for Coach Hans Michael Weiss. The rain pouring again here at Rizal Memorial Stadium. Right, it's pouring heavy once more. This majestic field of the Rizal Memorial Stadium. And uh, Chinese Taipei will have a substitution of their own. 
That's player number 26, Huang Su Ming, coming in for Wang Ruwei. And then it's Lin Ming Wei coming in for Yu Chia Huang. Fresh legs for Chinese Taipei. They've turned up the heat here in the second half. And now they're going to look to try to finish strong here. Chinese Taipei just shuffling the cards of their own, trying to find that edge against the Philippines. So far, it's a level match that we have leveled on Goal scored, the level in possession again. 51 to 49 so far for the Philippines, but it's it's an almost 50-50 possession that we have in this game right now, Jing. Now it's been completely two different halves. The Philippines no longer able to simply have their way here. The Chinese Taipei have really made it this into a close contest. The one like we had mentioned to expect at the top of the broadcast. Uh, Coach Hans Michael Weiss before this match was saying we're going to need some luck against these guys because they are a quality side and we're really getting a showcase of that now. In a span of six or seven months, Chinese Taipei faced Thailand twice. Back in December, they've actually won a goal to nil against Thailand in an international friendly as Thailand has been preparing for the AFF Mitsubishi Electric Cup. Solid challenge there from Linares, but he's given up a free kick. Another opportunity on the set piece for Chinese Taipei, but they take it quick and play it from the back. If you're going to give away free kicks, that's the sort of area that you won't mind too much. Near the center circle, in that middle third. Renato is doing well to stop the play in a safe zone. There's confirmation of those substitutions. It'll be interesting to see how that changes the dynamic here for the visitors. Coach Gary White actually has one more card to play in the likes of Chen Ju Chie who scored in the international friendly against Thailand in December so far Chinese Taipei on possession once more using that left side of the field to attract most of the players in white now starting to switch it all the way up to the right oh no Menares has been caught here using his arms and that's going to be a free kick in a terrible area for the Ascals Yu Yao Xing doing well to draw attention to himself after receiving contact from Linares who seemed to have used his arms perhaps and this is a free kick Jamer right at the edge of the area it's Linares getting the booking as well on that foul. So dangerous spot. We talked about it being a strength of his being physical. And perhaps just getting drawn into the emotion of the duel with Yu Yao Xing. Now, Big Lin moment. Blocked by the wall. Neil Etheridge just building a huge and towering wall in front of him to prevent a goal scoring opportunity for Chinese Taipei. But they still have possession here as they thread the ball to the middle. Linares gets to the ball and clears it out. 
too strong of a pass. Now a chance for Chinese Taipei on the right side. But cleared once more by the Philippines. It's the slick transitions now offensively that's missing from the attack of the Philippines. In the first half, although the Philippines weren't afraid to play the early ball into the forwards, they were also capable of playing through the middle, on the flanks, and making themselves a little bit more dynamic and unpredictable. And right now, they just aren't able to find the same connections. As we approach the halfway point of the second half, the Philippines starting to spark that counter-attack again. Mike Ott just couldn't get to the ball. A deflection. The Philippines are asking for a deflection from Chinese Taipei. But our first referee, Le Wu Lin, says it's Chinese Taipei's throw in. Wu Yen Shu couldn't find any player in blue. Apparently was given back by Chinese Taipei to the Philippines. Hasn't done much wrong today. Referee Li Wu Lin. That one was uh, a bit of a head scratcher for everyone in the stadium. The foul is called against. Player number 30, Yu Yao Xing, goal scorer for Chinese Taipei. We talked right. about the incredible tempo that the Philippines played in that first half, the energy that they showed. But that's also energy expended. And now we are 72 minutes into this match, and the question is how long can you sustain that kind of style, that kind of tempo? And you're seeing a few more tired legs out there. And Chinese Taipei are trying to take advantage. Neil Etheridge saving the Philippines once more. Let's take a look at that once more, Jing. Found room, edge of the area. Not too many options in front of him. It's a good decision to pull the trigger there he's earned himself a corner kick as well as having tested Neil Etheridge once more Chinese Taipei on the ascendancy second corner for Chinese Taipei not able to produce anything to threaten Neil Etheridge or the back line of the Philippines Coach Chance Michael Weiss trying to shuffle the cards once more as a couple of substitutions are waiting on the wings for the Philippines. Perhaps not so surprising that Coach Hans Michael Weiss is putting in a couple players known more for their defensive profile than their ability to go forward. The game is starting to get away a little bit from the Philippines. Space is opening up. Chinese Taipei is starting to take advantage. And now you put in uh, a cool, calm head and veteran in Martin Stoible. And the energy of Oskari Kekkonen. And perhaps to remove the spaces that have opened up. Stoible coming in for Gio Pabuwalan. Surprisingly, the youngster from Far Eastern University not too much of an impact in this game. Getting introduced at halftime. He had 25 minutes to work, but wasn't able to make some threats as well. So Martin Stoibel is coming in for him. And then Oskari Kekkonen comes in for the goal scorer, Mike Ott. Right, Schelt with the header. Nobody in the middle for the Philippines. Sato wins possession again for the Philippines. Cleared away by Chinese Taipei. Here's Wu Yen She on the counter attack. Feeds it to Lin Ming Wei on the left side. Lin Ming Wei falls down but goes for a goal kick. 
confirmation from our stadium announcer that we have 3,758 fans in attendance here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. 500 more people compared to that match against Nepal. Well, that's a sign of things to come. This is a friendly match on a Monday night. Pouring rain here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. But the football fans are out enjoying this football spectacle. And they're being treated to a great contest. And this is the type of performance, regardless of what we see here as a result, that will make people want to come back. You know, the ASCO is renowned for fighting performances. And it's exactly what we're seeing here on top of some great football, Jamer. Surprisingly, into the buildup of the international friendlies, Jeng, there were a lot of doubters of the Philippine Ascas with the switch of the coaching staff with Coach Hans Michael Weiss getting his second chance with the Philippines. There were a lot of people not optimistic enough in terms of the chances of the Philippines, but as it turns out, we, had th we have 3,700 people inside the stadium. Like what you've said, we're just seeing the things that are in the future for the Philippines. Uh, success breeds expectations and over the last decade we've been lucky fortunate to have witnessed a lot of fantastic results and the rise has been spectacular from the philippines but it's about being able to sustain that upward trajectory so uh, there's no surprise that there have been a few eyebrows raised with regards to you know the performances in recent times but this would be definitely heartening these last two outings for the Ascals and we're still not finished here you know we have an opportunity to see this side really dig deep to try to get a result confirmation of the substitutions out there Martin Stoyle for Gio Pabualan uh, Mike Ott had a great outing up top for the Philippines showed a lot of dynamism and his ability to drift out wide and gr showed great energy in, in, in offensive and defensive transitions for Gio Pabuan what an opportunity for him and uh, a fantastic chance for him to build experience in this national team side and to really get his exposure at this level it's a, a very different level from that of the UAAP and this is only going to be an experience that will grow him as a player but right now uh, coach Hans Michael Weiss opting for more veteran players although Oscar Ikekan is still very young in terms of his experience at this level he certainly has more and Martin Stoible nobody can doubt the experience and ability that he brings in every match for the Ascals experienced legs right now for coach Michael Weiss to complete the remaining 12 minutes of the match as a counter-attack is on for the Philippines and a great through ball for Jesse Cura. Couldn't use it. No foul is called by the referee. As Chinese Taipei will go for their own version of a counter-attack. Neil Etheridge gathers for the Philippines and resets with Daisuke Sato on the left side. Sato, long ball forward, looking for his teammate, Minigeshi. There is a deflection, and it Jesse will Curran be a corner. Now at that right wing position, has been pushed up with Martin Stoible pushing into the right back slot. It's a great run from him, and just clever defending from the Chinese Taipei center back, uh, covering his right side, knowing that Jesse might want to favor, pushing it back onto his favorite foot, and trying to get a shot away. You see the versatility here of Jesse Curran not far away from Enrique Linares Linares with a golden opportunity as we take a look at it once more Jing Curran with a lovely curling ball inside the box but Linares just couldn't get the right touch to punch it into the goal 10 more minutes and some added time in this international friendly match between the Philippines and Chinese Taipei.
far from over here. Still so much to play. Chinese Taipei with the possession once more. Philippines looking for one golden opportunity. To get themselves ahead once more of the visitors. The Chinese Taipei have a chance. Down the right side. Neil Etheridge punches it out. Yao Kochi with the cross. And it was close enough for Neil Etheridge to punch away. It was another good curling ball from the right side, Jing. They have seen that side as a weaker side for the Philippines. They're trying to exploit that more with those crosses. Not too many options on that attack really for Chinese Taipei. They did well to cause some problems anyway. Great footwork there. And that's just a professional foul from Daisuke Sato. He's going to earn himself a yellow card for his troubles. If he's going to stop a player from scoring, Daisuke Sato wouldn't mind to get that yellow card to prevent an even dangerous goal-scoring opportunity for Chinese Taipei as we have eight minutes remaining in this game and another set piece for Chinese Taipei. Had to take one for the team. The back line was wide open to be attacked, especially on the Philippines' left side. But this is a free kick in a dangerous area. And a kind of chance that Chinese Taipei really crave, especially late in a match. And this match is a friendly in name only. Both sets of players really taking this game very seriously. And cooler heads are prevailing now as the scuffle inside the box for the ball. Here's the delivery from Yu Yin Shu. A strike from Lei, or Lin rather. Chance again for Chinese Taipei as they reset from the back with Wang Zhu Ming. And after getting themselves an equalizer, Jing, Chinese Taipei are now leading the possession count at 54-46 to 46 against the Philippines. Well, Chinese Taipei showing they can control the ball. They can express themselves when they have possession. And they're going to try to finish strong here with a couple more substitutions. Wang Jun Myung, the provider of the uh, assist earlier, will be subbed off. As well as Yu Yao Sing, the goal scorer, will be replaced by Pai Shao Yu and Chen Ju Che. Chen Ju Che, scorer of that solitary goal in their friendly match against Thailand back in December of last year. Now coming on to infuse some fresh legs into the final five minutes and a half of this game against the Philippines. Carly de Murga telegraphs the pass. The quality from Carly de Murga there. Under pressure, taking it on his chest. Almost starting a counter-attack himself. Now here's the Philippines with Jesse Curran on a counter-attack. He has Hikaru Minigeshi in the middle. Right shell couldn't pull the trigger from close range. And it's cleared out by Chinese Taipei again. Minigeshi has been a real spark plug since coming on. And creating another fantastic opportunity there. So close. Broika with a lovely skill. Finding. The option up front in OJ Porteria. The Philippines composing themselves. 
Shaking off the defense and taking it back to Stoibler. Karuminigeshi asking for the ball over the left side. Linares to Sato. Going to get the one-two with Minigeshi, but they earned themselves another throw in. Porteria on the ball. Lin dispossessed of Porteria. Quick counter attack here for Chinese Taipei. Great sliding effort. Had to get that right, Carly de Morga. Chinese Taipei were then through on goal. And look at that for a pass from Neil Etheridge. Threading it to Kekkonen under pressure. Another long ball forward out here for the Philippines. That has been blocked by Shen Ting Yang. That's fantastic defending. He's been taken out by Oskari Kekkonen here. That was a very dangerous ball over the top that he had to deal with. The two Germans, Hans Michael Weiss and Stefan Struck, just discussing the options, just discussing the tactics down the line to see what they can actually do to win this match against Chinese Taipei. As we have two and a half minutes remaining in this international friendly. It's traveled. A long distance there for the throw in. Almost caught the Philippines napping. Dylan De Broeker aware of the danger. Great pass it to the middle for Lin. Lin. What a save from Neil. The OG Etheridge. Top-notch stuff from the goalkeeper, Neil Etheridge. Doing well on the stretch to get that shot away, but the awareness, the reactions, perfect. The Birmingham City goalkeeper just showing his experience. Another youngster is going to be introduced into the fold after this sequence. Chinese Taipei try to set it inside the box, cleared away by the Philippines. Chinese Taipei earns another throw in, and now the youngster. Jared Pena will be introduced to the applause of the Rizal Memorial Stadium and he'll be replacing OJ Porteria. The old guards making way for the youngsters of the Philippines. A minute and change for Jared Pena to make his mark. Comes highly touted, extremely talented, but here comes Chinese Taipei. Another save by Neil Etheridge, but they've been punished by Chinese Taipei on the counter-attack. On the fourth and fifth time of asking, Lin Ming Wei scores the go-ahead goal against the Philippines and silence the crowd here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. A substitute doing his thing. Lin Ming Wei, the right flank of the Philippines cut open. And that second ball falling right into the path of the substitute. And you see what it means to Chinese Taipei. They're celebrating like they've won a tournament here. And why not? They've battled back from 2-1 down, showed plenty of heart here in the second half. And they're getting their just rewards for the effort that they've showcased.
And hear the crowd jig. Their hearts are not broken. They're still backing the Asgos. As we have four minutes of added time, the Philippines have a chance to equalize with Ikara Minigeshi. Leaves it for Dice Kesato. Sato, cross, blocked. Right shell, try to go for it. Minigeshi, ball is out, throw in for the Philippines. This game is not over, Jing. Minigeshi takes it back to Kiki Linares. Into the middle, switching it to the right side for Stoibler. Three minutes to produce an equalizer. Quick one, two. Foul is called against Chinese Taipei. Daisuke Sato didn't like that. The challenge from Yao Ko Chi. Impeding Daisuke Sato in the process to prevent that one, two. What a moment. What a chance here for the Philippines to cause issues inside the danger zone. Neil Etheridge trying to get his teammates into the box, trying to pile the numbers forward here. Current with the delivery inside the box. Great header. Chance for the Philippines. Save by Pan Wenche. A chance created there by two center backs. Linares rising high to make contact. It fell nicely for Carly De Morga, but just not enough power to to cause trouble for Pan Wen Chi. Golden opportunity for the Philippines to level the match at the death. Still have a minute remaining to do so. Pan Wen Che milking off the clock here. But under the new standards of FIFA, the more you milk the clock, the more they're going to add time to it. We've seen that in the FIFA World Cup where in the, the added time goes as far as 10 or 12 minutes because of time wasting. They've taken that into account. It is more than that though, Jamer. You know, it's, it's trying to take this thing out of the game, trying to take the tempo out of it. Uh, that time might be added on, but certainly the momentum of the Philippines has been disrupted. And that's, that's, that's that game management that's being showcased here by the veteran. Right, Schilt with a chance earlier. Throw in right now for the Philippines. One final chance in attack. Right, Schilt missed the header. They have the opportunity cross. Looking for the opportunity over the left side. Nobody there. But it was a decent delivery inside the box. Just no white shirt on the left side. Uh, Jesse Curran's fast, but you're asking a bit too much of him there. Full time whistle. And it's 3 2 for the visitors, Chinese Taipei. The Philippines closing out the international. Window with a defeat against the visitors. Your thoughts on this game, Jing? No, it's a fantastic contest. As a spectacle, you really couldn't complain. As a fan, this is what football is all about. You know, regardless of the domination that the Philippines showcased in that first half, they did concede a very unfortunate goal at the very beginning. And games can turn very, very quickly, you know? And Chinese Taipei showed that they weren't going to be deflated. They went in and put in a lot of effort and they got their rewards in this match. But really, the Philippines don't need to drop their heads too much here. I mean, in these two 
friendlies, it was all about trying to see, engage where the Azcals were at, at this particular transition in this stage of their squad with a new coach at the helm or the return of coach Hans Michael Weiss. And what we've seen is there's a lot of promising signs, Jamer. The, that fight of the Azcals is there. The familiarity with one another is there. We saw some beautiful football showcased particularly in that first half but did we run out of steam were there things to improve certainly in Chinese Taipei were the right opponents to showcase that we're not the finished product yet and if we are going to go and, and and achieve the goals that we want to achieve in November then there are certainly some things that we still need to address but does this mean that this was a failure these last two games because of a defeat that we've seen here certainly not you know I, I think there's plenty of positives to take away from this but there's certainly been some signs that there are things that we need to address and that's that you know a fantastic two matches for the Ascals in the last four days and it's great to see that uh, the fans are out here excited about the Ascals and why not there is plenty to look forward to from this side well the Philippines the Philippine Ascals have rejuvenated the hope of a nation. Yes, we've been on a slump over the past few years, but the return of Hans Michael Weiss and the return of the important players, the key players that we have right now, gives the Philippines the hope that there are a lot more in stock. We are trying to get back to where we were. We're trying to see how things will pan out in the future. This is just the first window under the tutelage of Hans Michael Weiss. Plenty more to come for the Philippines and We'll never know what we're going to see in the future for the Philippines. We saw a lot of the crowd clapping the players as they were coming off. They're not that disappointed. You know, obviously the result showcases that we lost. But first of all, you've given away a real bizarre goal here to start things off, which provided the platform for Chinese Taipei. You couldn't recreate this goal if you tried a hundred times, right? And to beat Neil Etheridge from this type of distance is extremely rare. So the character showed, however, to bounce back from that, that is something that all the Philippine fans of football can look forward to and hold on to. And, uh, and as, I, as I mentioned, you know, some of the play that we showcased today was, was really breathtaking. They've shot a lot of bravery. They battled it out against Chinese Taipei, Mike Ott, Converting from the penalty spot as Q as a cucumber out here, making sure to level the match after conceding that early goal in the first two minutes two minutes of the match, and from then on, the Ascals have found their rhythm, used that momentum in the first half to find the opportunity. Came for them, they led two goals to one earlier on, but Chinese Taipei showing their heart of their own as well. Gayoso producing a chance of his own as well from this pass from Jesse Curran. And Harvey Gayoso's absence in the second half, you certainly felt it. The energy that he provided on the right flank, his quality as well. Something that we, we lacked a bit in that second half. But look at that. Kike Reichelt showing up big with a performance up top for the Philippines. It's been a position that we've struggled with a little bit in the last few years, trying to figure out what would be the solution up front. And I think Patrick Kreischer, you know, rubbing it in a little bit for those who doubted his ability. He, he put in a great shift today. Neil Etheridge put on a great shift as well, despite conceding three goals in this match. He's shown that he still has that quality to don that number one jersey for the Philippines the Chinese Taipei just producing great chance here from Wang Jun Myung's cross and Yu Yao Sing just making them pay if leaving him unmarked there that's what you gotta love about the game of football you stay in the game long enough you get yourself a chance to work your way back it's almost like a puncher's chance in boxing and that's what Chinese Taipei did they stayed in the game they just didn't allow themselves to be blown out in that first half by keeping the scoreline close. And when they got their opportunities, they, they put it in the back of the net. 
and the Philippines almost mounted a second comeback. You know, it, it's been it's been a fantastic contest. It really was. Neil Etheridge called into action a lot of times. This chance punched out by Neil Etheridge, just making sure that they don't concede a goal there. But with this threat came the third goal of the match for Chinese Taipei. And eventually the game-winning goal for Lin Mingwei. It was a game of two halves here, Jing. The Philippines had the upper hand in the first half. Chinese Taipei had the upper hand in the second half. But they had plenty of chances as well. But this man right here, Neil Etheridge, just still showing what he's got, what he's left in the tank after all of the years that he's been representing the Philippines. And just look at that. The Ascos showing their appreciation. The Viking clap together with the Ultras Filipinas and the rest of the crowd here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium. Now it's beautiful to see, you know, it's, it's the connection between the fans and the Ascos. This result might not be ideal but that connection has been re-established and that's something that is gonna uh, gonna carry this Asco side in the months to come full-time stats out here Jing we've talked about the Philippines dominating the possession in the first half but as we take a look on the full-time stats 51 to 46 almost an, a level in possession in Chinese Taipei producing more chances more shots on goal and shots on target over the Philippines. What's your takeaway from these stats that we have right now, Jing? Ah, it, it showcases that Chinese Taipei is, is, is a force to be reckoned with as well. You know, they talk about a reaction from that second half or from that break. They only had one shot in that first half and now they overtook us in that second half. They put in a fight, one that we needed to experience to see just what level we really are at. Now, there was a touch of good fortune in two of their goals, the first one and the third one. But, you know, it, it shows that there are things for us to improve, as I mentioned earlier on. And, you know, it, it's exactly what we needed, you know, to get our confidence up. We do have a, a, a fantastic ability to be dangerous. Uh, and we showed that, you know, we have a, a very high tempo game that we can play. And it's exciting. It's something to look forward to. However, we have some things uh, to improve, as I mentioned, and we were a little bit unlucky as well with our injuries. No Daniels, uh, Harvey Goyosi we lost, no Kevin Ingresso, you know, uh, a lot of these things perhaps didn't play in our favor, but again, it is what it is, and I'm, I'm quite happy with what was showcased in the last four days. Well, we might be coming off a defeat against Chinese Taipei, but heads, heads held high. And high hopes here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium as the Philippines have showcased a great game. It's 3-2 for Chinese Taipei. From the hardworking staff here at the Rizal Memorial Stadium for the special broadcast of the Philippine Football Federation. This is Jamie De La Cruz with my partner, Jing Amlang. Thank you so much for watching us. This has been the FIFA International Friendly Match between Philippines and Chinese Taipei. We thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.